Soho recently released a new feature that has been eagerly anticipated for many years, the ability to add or remove rows from a subform. I found the documentation a bit confusing, so I'm going to record a video for you. What you do, I'll show you here an example of how it works. No subform rows right now. When I click on this one, you can see it has populated 10 rows. How did that happen? Let's have a look. Here's the code. I'm fetching the data from Zoho CRM. I have a, in here, a product renamed to course, and I have a multi-select lookup here with the attendees. And what I wanted to do is show the attendee details in the subform here. To do that, I first fetch the data. I set up a collection, which is basically a list that they've given it a new name. I've recorded a video about the difference between collections and lists and maps. But for now, just think of it as a list. And what I do, I iterate over the data I fetched from Zoho CRM, the attendees. Here is the interesting part. What you have to do in order to add a row to the subform, you have to do this thing, which is, <laughs> I find it a bit weird. I personally would have preferred if I could just do map, but for whatever reason, they're going with this. And then what you do, the way it works, this is the name of the main form, and this is the name of the subform in there. Let me show you that. If I go to edit this application, you will be able to see the main form is attendee register. And the subform is called attendees, which you will shortly see. That's my subform there. Just to make double sure, let's have a look at the deluge field name. Yep. There you go, the field link name. Form name dot subform field link name, and then you invoke it like that. Then what I do here, I'm just getting data ready because then I need to fetch some of the other information from the contacts module. Once I fetch that data, then I've got my new row variable. I can then set the fields in that subform row, the email, the name, and this is a name field, which means that in order to set the first name, I do name dot first name like that. Same thing there. And then I insert that row into my collection. And then finally, the last step is I do input dot attendees dot insert with the collection. If I was doing this for a, a different form, what I, I can also do that, let me show you that. If, for example, I have a custom function, and I want to do the same thing there. Make a new custom function. What I'll do, first of all, I will get the attendee register record. And then I basically do the same thing where I just need to substitute input for that record.
Let's double check, I haven't used input anywhere else. Nope, looks like we're good. In order to use that, what I will need to do, let's reload. I'll leave a few in there because what should happen now is that I should end up with 13 rows. Let's double check the result. I need to get the ID. Alright, now if we reload here, we should see more records in the subform. Indeed, we do. What if we wanted to delete everything from the subform first? Let's try that. We could do. It's easier if I do it from the other one because then I get the autocomplete input.tendies.clear, that's what I want. What we should see now is that currently has 13, we should end up with 10. You can see pub six in there twice. Perfection. Hope that helps you to understand how to work with subforms dynamically using this new feature from Zero Creator.